Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. Approximately 11 a.m. in Honolulu, 5 o'clock in New York. It is the second day of July 2012, Monday, and this is the daily report for gold and silver. Quiet marketplace, gold has been trading in a range of, call it unchanged on the day to slightly lower, currently trading off about $2 on the day, 1598.10. The low is 86.40 and the high is 16.04. Silver, slightly to the upside, up about 3 cents, 27.62. The low of 27.17 and a high of 27.74. Traders, I wouldn't be surprised if this week was characterized by light trading activity as we in the USA get ready to celebrate our Independence Day, July 4th, which is, of course, Wednesday of this week. Until then, you're probably on the U.S. side going to get some pretty light trading. I want to start today's show by taking a look at a daily chart, cash market of gold, and I really want to talk about some of the areas that I'm looking for to hold as support and resistance areas so that we can begin to get some sort of a target for our most current trade. Traders, as this market was going down, of course, we talked about a band of real strong support, roughly 1520, 1530. In fact, on my Kitco interview, we're doing a series for the novice traders. I started the series with support and resistance and used this area really as an example because I feel it exemplifies really what you're looking for when you're looking at support and resistance. That being said, now that the market has moved up a little bit, we have a couple of new levels we want to look at. I'm looking at two different Fibonacci retracement areas. And the reason I'm going to use two is there is a what we call a Fibonacci harmonics. That Fibonacci harmonics, of course, is simply where two different time sequences give you a very similar reading. And that's going to be this area right in here between 1655 and and 1679 we'll talk about that in the center in a second excuse me but obviously as this market moved up and we had this tremendous almost fifty dollar rise back last week we were able to close above the 78 percent retracement this is the short term and that is 1589 you can see that right in here now the market is trading above that my belief is that if this trade is going to pan out and be fruitful for us, this particular area right in here, meaning call it uh, 1590, 1580 in that area, that's going to have to become critical support. In other words, for this market to continue rising, this area right in here can no longer be resistance. It has to begin to be supportive of our price point. And of course, you can see when the market broke, we've had resistance here, it was resistance in this area. But you can see that it really has been trading within a pretty defined range when we take a look at recent trading activity. So what we want to see is if in fact the market begins to move up, it's going to have to break through certain levels. This will have to become support. Our next real level of resistance is going to be about 1630. And I really, until we see the market go to and break above 1630, we don't have concrete or definitive evidence that in fact this tremendously long correction is over because to do that we've really got to see a break above this particular area 1530 and then our next level which is 15 call it excuse me 1680 1655 right in that area and that's created as you can see this harmonic level fibonacci harmonics where we get these two areas very, very close. Now, I've actually moved them apart. You can see that I moved this down so they don't kind of fall on top of each other, which is what they do when I do line them up. So you get a good Fibonacci harmonics right in the area, call it 1660. You can see that we have a series of tops in here. As the market went down, we want to see the exact opposite happen if the market's going to move up. In other words, as it moves up, each area here it was very supportive here it's resistance we're going to have to see a break above this on a closing basis become support and then our next target or level is going to be as i said around 1655 to 1680. 
of course, to take a look at these various resistance areas. What I've done, this is a daily chart. This is August Gold off of the COMEX in Hankinashi format. As you can see, these are the areas that we're going to want to pay attention to with particular interest because these were our existing tops prior. This is that 1650 area. This area, we really need to see a break above that. And then of course, just below 1700, these sets of double tops here are right around 1802. So we've got quite some distance to cover as we ascertain, is this market finally done with this long corrective wave four and will begin this final on a major count impulse wave number five because i can tell you this traders once we actually get into an impulse wave an impulse wave five that should take us to new historical highs it's simply a waiting game and seeing when in fact we have concrete evidence that this correction has in fact concluded traders we saw a phenomenal move in silver back on Friday of last week and the one thing that I believed was a strong technical piece of evidence that would convey to me really some bottom activity in the silver market is when we take a look at this this is that parabolic rise this is back of course beginning of 2011 market goes to fifty dollars for the second time in history of course the first was when the hunt brothers attempted to take the market over you can see it we made a high this is roughly at about thirty dollars here but then it retraced and came back down when we take a look at these series of bottoms that we have right at around 2650 i think that you can see that even more than gold we really have some historical precedents right now for this having a real supportive technical aspect to it in other words i think that we have probably seen the low in silver in terms of our target areas when you take a look at this particular top right in here, that happens right roughly at $31, $30.90. If we follow it along, you can see that right in here as the market came down, this was supportive here and here. When it broke through, it broke rather hard. And so this area should be our initial target on this trade. As I said, roughly $31, just below that. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Tuesday for another daily update and review. Of course, Wednesday, there will be no report in celebration of 4th of July. Have a great day. Bye-bye.